If you want to be a part of the conversation before it happens here on YouTube, click that link in the description to join the free Courtside Financial Discord. What's going on, everyone? My name is Obi, and welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast. Today, we're going to be talking about things that represent incredible progress in the EV space and also the challenges that remain. So it's going to be a super interesting, super insightful episode. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers. Click the notification bell icon. Leave a comment down below. All your engagement really does help out the channel, help us to grow and reach a broader audience. So without further ado, let's get into today's episode and hopefully I can finish recording this before my camera dies. First up, I've got this to say with my jaw on the floor. The new uh, version of the Tesla Model Y just shattered expectations in China. Get this, they clocked 70,000 orders in just five days after launch. And for those keeping score at home, that's not just good, that's astronomical. We're talking about a roughly uh, 14,000 orders per day. Remember we discussed their 50,000 uh, order milestone not too long ago on the channel. Well, they just exceeded expectations again, leaving that in the dust. The base Model Y is starting at 30, uh, approximately 36,280 US dollars. That's the equivalent of around 263,000 yuan with the long range all wheel drive at 3,500 uh, 3, uh, you want. And deliveries for everything are expected to kick off in March. Now, as a Neo Bull, I've definitely got to take my hat off to Tesla here. This isn't just about pricing, though that's certainly competitive. What we're seeing is the result of Tesla's rapid R&D pace, which has become a secret weapon against traditional automakers and EV startups. They've got the Chinese team focusing on design and interior improvements, while the US team is handling the autopilot software development. It's a smart division of labor that's clearly paying off. But here's where our story takes an interesting turn and it relates to a crucial challenge that the entire EV industry is facing. While Tesla is celebrating these massive order numbers in China, we're seeing some sober, harsh re sobering harsh realities about EV performance in cold weather in China. And this isn't just about minor inconveniences, we're talking about fundamental uh, challenges that are affecting every single EV manufacturer. Let me paint a picture for you. Imagine driving your EV and then certainly, suddenly your 430 kilometer range drops to 230 kilometers. That's not just hypothetical, it's happening right now across um, northeastern regions in China. So the science behind this is actually quite fascinating. Lithium ion batteries, whether they're ternary lithium or lithium iron phosphate, operate best between 10 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. When temperatures drop below that, you're looking at a 30% range decrease on average. But wait, it gets more complicated. Turn on the heater, you might say. That's another massive power drain. Unlike traditional cars that can use engine waste for heating the cabin, EVs generate that heat purely from battery power. One hour of heating can consume five kilowatt hours of electricity. Add in seat heating and defrosting, and you're basically watching half your battery capacity disappear. This brings us to a remarkable achievement that deserves some attention. In the midst of all these challenges, NEO's ET7 recently completed a 600 a uh, 50 mile journey in a cold way. Maintaining a comfortable uh, cabin temperature of 20 degrees Celsius or 68 degrees Fahrenheit. This was accomplished with their new 150 kilowatt hour battery pack, which boasts the highest energy density in mass production global. It has a single cell energy density of 360 watts per kilogram. The contrast between these two stories tells us something interesting about the EV market in 2025. While we're seeing incredible advances in technology and strong consumer demand, we're also facing some industry realities that um, all manufacturers and the whole industry globally really has to face. The fact that only five out of 23 pure electric vehicle models achieved more than half their range in uh, extreme cold weather shows that we still have a lot of work to do. So what does this mean for investors and consumers? First, it suggests that different markets may require different solutions. While Tesla is crushing it in China with the Model Y, the cold weather uh, performance issues indicate that regional considerations are crucial for any manufacturer's global strategy. Second, breakthroughs like NEO's achievement in 
uh, extreme cold weather. Show that solutions are possible, but they require technological innovation. Anyways, as we wrap up today's episode, I want to emphasize that I remain bullish on NEO. What we're seeing in the market is a maturation of the entire industry. These challenges are real, but so is the progress. Tesla's order numbers and NEO's range achievement aren't just company victories. They're indicators of where the industry is headed. Anyways, that's all for today's episode of the Courtside Financial Podcast. Happy Monday. I hope you found it valuable, useful, insightful, at the very least entertaining. If it was any of those things for you, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, help us reach our goal, click the notification bell icon, share the video, uh, and leave a comment down below. We'll catch you in the next installment. This is Obi signing off of the CF Podcast. Thanks, thanks for watching. Goodbye.